Hi guys, this is the MMA Diagnosis Podcast. I'm your host, Hammer Mir. Today I have with me a professional mixed martial artist, being in the heavyweight division, training at our Fight Zone London. Shah Kamadi, how are you, my bro? Alhamdulillah, I'm good. How are you, man? I'm all good, man. Finally, yeah. For people that don't know, I did his first ever interview <laughs> yeah. in uh, Fight Star. So, yeah, Fight Star um, 21. Now, you know, honestly, you know, from then, I kind of knew you. I was like, this guy's going to get far. You know, the way you move and everything. For a big guy as well. Um, honestly, see, like, a lot of heavyweights aren't like that, especially in the UK. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, that was a long time ago. Not really, it was like two and a, two two and a bit ago, years ago. Only two and a half years ago, yeah. Yeah, but I was a lot heavier back then. You, you can see yeah, it. Yeah, 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 you can was, see, yeah, yeah, you lost weight. I was, it was after lockdown, didn't it? I think. Yeah, 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 20, yeah. End of 2021. Yeah, yeah. So I was just heavy. But, yeah. I forgot, I, I can remember a little bit what I said in that interview as well. I, I was talking about entertaining the fans. You know, yeah, and uh, listen, seven first round finishes later, I'm pretty sure, you know, the fans have been entertained. It's mad, <laughs> isn't it? You're seven, on, uh, basically seven and all. You had five amateur fights, two and no, all. No, six amateur fights. Oh, six? Yeah, six. Yeah, six. six. All right, six. And then so two six. pro, yeah. Most of them were in five star, right? Yeah, most of them. Three, yeah, yeah, three, or, the three of them, three of them or four yeah, of them, I think. Yeah, about three or four of them, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you were the champ there, and then yeah. you transitioned to uh, pro last year. Yeah, end of yeah, last year. End of last year, yeah. Um, how has the transition been like for you, like training-wise? Mm, the transition hasn't been too uh, difficult, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, because I'm training with pros already, um, you kind of have to train like a pro anyways. Um, the only difficulty is uh, you have to have... The conditioning uh, is increased. Just You have to be way more conditioned. But that, that comes with you know training anyways. And getting used to other things like knee, knee, knees to the head and uh, elbows. But apart from that, adjusting has been quite straightforward, smooth. You know, we, we, we had the plan in mind that I was going to go pro last year. So throughout the, 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 the few months leading up to my last amateur fight, we was already thinking about, okay, these are the weapons we're going to use. These are the tools that we, these are the things we have to think about when we turn pro. So uh, mentally, I was, always, I was prepared and ready. So, I've got to ask you anyways, how long have you actually been training? Because I don't, I never, when did you uh, actually start training? I started training at the end of 2018. But it was just okay, BJJ okay. at the time. And I started training MMA 2019. So... You've done a lot in that short, that's a short time, man. It's a short time, yeah, but I've been, yeah. And also there was a corona, COVID in the middle. So yeah. I'm not sure how, the total amount of time I've been training. Okay. But... Um, just been just been training I've been consistent throughout the whole time period so yeah, yeah. what made you get into the sport though like what made me get into it yeah yeah I don't know you know like, I always wanted to get into like some form of self defense martial arts okay, okay. and uh, I think I thought BJJ would be a good one just cuz yeah, I, I like yeah. grappling and it's always fun like it's like a fun sport isn't it it's there's not too much impact you're not going to get too much damage for yeah. example boxing is a bit to, to jump into it straight away, I think it'll be a little bit of a, a leap, but BJJ was good. I mean, this, this gym was a lot different before. Uh, there was, this was the only area where we used to train. Okay, uh, okay. So there'd be this side of the map, we'd do nogi and MMA. That side of the map, we'd do uh, just BJJ, really. So now you got upstairs, right? Now we've got upstairs and we've got another uh, area as well that they expanded. So yeah, it's come, it's come, the gym's come a long way as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, how, you know, for you, like obviously, you don't see a lot, of, there's not a lot of Bengalis in pro level at least. Yeah. There are some amateurs yeah. that I've know, I know of now. Yeah. Before, but yeah, I made that list and everyone yeah, was like, yeah. bro, you missed this guy. I'm like, oh yeah, you know what? <laughs> uh, but um, for you now, like I, like I said, you know, I interview, I suddenly started hitting like, mad like i hit like six thousand views in like for a little two minute interview i was like what the hell and then all i saw was the then i was showing you the stats all from yeah. bangladesh so yeah. when did you start getting like big over there like, how long has that been it's only been quite recent to be fair yeah. i think after my pro debut yeah yeah it started blowing up a little bit back home and um i think yeah it was just after the pro debut i think a lot of uh, new channels put it yeah, out in uh, bangladesh and just got a lot of media attention and then i don't know my social started blowing up but it's been good i think um, they're just happy to see someone like yeah. raising the flag because you don't see a lot of bangladeshi fighters like you said 100%, yeah, yeah. 
do you feel like do, do you feel like that kind of are you are, are you are you kind of a social person or are you uh, one of them where you don't like no nah, i'm a social people? person when i when i have to be but a lot of the times i think because i'm so focused yeah. on mma i don't like to get caught up with the um the glamour of things the, the, that kind yeah, of sort yeah, of stuff yeah. I'm, I'm i'm mainly i go to the gym i go home i, go home, I don't really bother myself with any external stuff i think you know um i'm getting a little bit more recognition now uh are, I'm you, the main, are you the main man now i'm bricklaying in east london <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what it's, it's good it's always, no no but it's always good it's always good when uh, people recognize me yeah yeah but yeah. i don't know I, I like to i've not achieved what i want to achieve yeah, yet yeah, so be. for for oh, me wow. to get recognition now it's almost like it's, it's a good thing but i got so much further to go in my head so i want to stick just keep my head down yeah, train yeah. hard just focus on what i need to focus on and uh, everything will come in due time anyways inshallah, yeah, inshallah. Yeah. where are you from Ibanga? Silet? yeah Silet yeah. Oh, yeah, Silet yeah, yeah, yeah. Balasuni <laughs> <laughs> who's been teaching you? <laughs> I know, I know. All, a lot of my boys are Bengali so yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> London now like because you know it is like in Birmingham a lot of a lot of the Bengali people like, you know, they train either just Thai boxing or they just do Jiu Jitsu they don't do like the MMA there's not a lot of MMA fighters in from my era but in London it seems like and out of Birmingham and all these around the country there's a lot of uh, Bengalis competing like Shajdul Haq yourself, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sami Haq um, I feel like you're in a good position in the sense of like the UFC is looking for heavyweights all the big organizations are looking for heavyweights and with the knockouts you're doing and the fights you're performing we could potentially with your activity as well we could potentially see you probably be the first one to make the UFC arguably if uh, it all goes well if it if it goes well i'm not looking to rush yeah yeah you don't um, want to rush it all, yeah. the thing is when when that stage happens i'm only 2 and 0 as a pro yeah 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 so i don't want to go to the ufc and then just get caught after like 2 3 fights okay, you, know? yeah. you you want to get to that level of experience where fighting around europe fighting different challenges i think european mma is coming up now and the level is increasing so i want to test myself in europe and there's a lot of big boys in Europe, man. I think, you know, we're going to see a lot more people coming out from Europe. And uh, like you see with Topuria as well, how he's captured like the Spanish market. Yeah, yeah, that's they're what going, I'm saying. They're going crazy for him. That's what I'm saying. You got the Bangladesh market. That's a that's a good market, man. Yeah, South it is. Asia as well. It is. It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not not just so. um, Bangladeshis support me. Pakistanis, Pakistanis uh, Indians, yeah. some people from India, South Asian support, South Asian support South me, Asia, yeah, yeah. Basically. Uh, and I'm not, and the Muslim community as well, and the Muslim community as well. So, I've got, um, you know, I'm representing everyone really, that's what, yeah, truly. That's what I'm so, I just want to take it one step at a time. If, yeah, it, if, yeah, if yeah. I'm first, inshallah, yeah. inshallah, you know, so be it. But it don't, it don't matter who's first. As it long doesn't as matter you make who's first. The journey, yeah, it's that's it's, the main it's, thing. Right? It's the main thing, you know. Yeah, with this, with a lot of. Um, I guess some people are sort of in a rush to see, you know, they want to see you make it so yeah, much, so much, so much. Yeah, yeah. But that's the thing about me saying I don't like going outside because every time someone yeah. asks me a question, they come up to me like, so you want to go to the UFC? You want to go to the UFC? I'm like, listen, just, yeah, yeah, just yeah, calm yeah. it down. You know, we're not thinking about that yet. Yeah, you know, one fight it will happen. But I'm 25 yeah. and that's very young for a heavyweight. Heavyweight, yeah. That's why people don't understand. Like, people don't understand. Heavyweight's career, you can fight up till you're, until you're 40. You know, so. I, I, if I take it slowly, if I take the right fights, if I prepare... Yeah. as i have you know i will make uh, within three or four years yeah but yeah, that's, that's the time a, that's frame. healthy yeah that's that's no. the time frame if it happens sooner it happens sooner if it happens later it happens yeah. later you know all i know is it will happen inshallah that's the main thing one thing yeah you're the most bowler bengali i've seen yeah <laughs> <laughs> what's your weight training regime what's my weight training did, regime? did, did, did you do did you lift before you started i lift to start i lift i start i was lifting I early from early lifting yeah when i, I saw you yeah, when, when we did the first year, yeah this guy lifts i was lifting from yeah. early yeah i started gym when i was probably 13 yeah earlier than that yeah so i've been training weights for a long time before i started um getting into bjj you're tall as well how tall are you what's your I'm like uh, 190 centimeters, so 6263. Six, six, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's pretty tall, man. Like, uh, for heavyweights, yeah, that's that's a good weight. And plus, that's, yeah, what are you weighing around? around like, what do you wear on? To be fair, I'm I'm getting lighter. Um, I'm about 107ish. 
but I'd like to get a bit heavier. Just How because. How many pounds? One or seven. One or seven is about two hundred thirty something pounds. Two hundred thirty. Okay, okay. You're on the lighter side for him. Yeah, on the lighter but, side. But then yeah. you got the speed, so. Got the speed and um, yeah, got the got the reactions. I guess. Would you ever consider light heavyweight? Uh, not at the moment, no. No, you don't. Just think because you weight cutting. Yeah. If I was to do it, I would have fought a light heavyweight. Uh, about when I was amateur. Yeah, yeah, okay, that because makes sense. So you get, pro, you get your body used to it. And stuff yeah, like. you'd have to. I'd have to do like a test cut, and I'd have to get my diet on point. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Plus, as you get older, it's going to be harder to. Yeah, away, it so. is going to be harder, and I think I can just. I just need to fix up my my diet and schedule eating a bit more, and I'll get up heavier. Anyways, it's just during camps because I've been fighting, 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 fighting. I've just been training hard, and my body's just just excess weight just sheds off. Yeah. yeah. I heard some. I heard some rumors about you. You know, I heard. Uh, I heard you got Pakistani genetics or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've not heard that, that before. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Do you remember that? No, no. Do you remember? No, it was on my page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comments. I was <laughs> like, what the hell, bro? <laughs> like, I didn't get that. Um, but okay, let's talk. Like, you, you know, you got the support now from the Bangladeshi community and things yeah. like that. Does that does that put like any pressure on you as well at the same time? Like, do you feel like because you're only two and all? Do you, you know feel what? like you know what? Like, nah, not necessarily. I don't. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you feel pressure, but you know what? You got to invite that pressure, man. Yeah. yeah. You got to invite that pressure, and that's the reason why. I'll tell you one thing. Do you know that debut the fight I had? Yeah. I didn't raise the desk flag. Yeah. No, I didn't I know, raise I know, the desk flag. I didn't raise the desk flag until my third fight, because I felt as I have to be. I have to represent, right? I'm representing, so I have to be the best. And only when I feel like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to be one of these guys that just do it and then go and cut and do you know what I mean? Just disappear. If I'm representing, I have to do it to the like to be the best and represent my people to the to the fullest. So I was kind of hesitant to to to, to raise the flag and uh, represent Bangladesh. But then when I realised, you know, these are, these are the kind of challenges and pressure that you have to take on if you want to make it anyways because the pressure is only going to get more and more and more and you know if I'm if I want to deal with it I have to deal with it early so every time I get a bit more uh, attention notoriety media attention da 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 I just it is what it is I just take it on the take it how it is and deal with it and it's only going to get more so I've got that in mind and I'm, I'm prepared mentally for that okay okay so your last fight LFL you fought Brazilian right um, yeah, yeah yeah finished him in the first round yeah how, how was that fight for you you thought you were sick and you thought you were sick right you want to talk about that I, I, I would, yeah I do want to talk about that so this fight it sent, it, um, my first opponent I had him booked in for a while yeah so I was preparing for that guy he's tall he's a different style he's a bit of a boxer I was preparing for him Thomas Namo, he's like six foot eight, whatever. He's a really tall guy. So preparing for him, he pulls out. Then they get another guy. He's a German guy. Um, he's a bit of a more of a brawler. So I'm preparing for that now. He pulls out. So now I have a third opponent. And remember, you have to remember, pullouts they kind of can affect you mentally. So you don't know if you're going to fight or not. And a lot of fighters they don't necessarily take uh, replacement fights. And I get it. I get it now because mentally. Game planning wise, you have little time to prepare for them, as do they on the other flip side. But you know, you, all you know is that it's going to be a fight, man. It's just going to be, it's going to be, there's no game planning. Both of you are just going to be coming there to fight. So then the third guy, this was on a week and a half notice or two and a half weeks notice. And I did, there wasn't much information on this guy. And I didn't necessarily, I made a mistake and I didn't really. Mentally, I was thinking, I had two pull-ups in a row. It's hard to kind of think, okay, I have a fight coming. Because you have a fight, you don't have a fight. You have a fight, you don't have a fight. And it can mentally um, take its toll. But it was okay, it was all fine. I, I had a game plan in mind. I could have made that fight a lot easier. But coming into fight week, <laughs> there was an illness going around in whatever gym that I was training, the gyms that I was training at. Yeah. So, and... I didn't, I didn't feel it until Thursday and I fly out on Friday, right? So I'm feeling it on Thursday. On Thursday, I'm, I was driving, driving my car and all of, like, I'm feeling 
coldness in my bones. Oh, I was okay, feeling like okay, in my yeah. bones. You know when you feel it in your bones, yeah, and you feel yeah, fatigue yeah, in your yeah. bones. And you're just like something's not right. So when I got home, I just started having bare paracetamol to try and because it was fever, innit? Because my neck was burning up, my head Asian was hot. Asian yeah, paracetamol. Trust me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Two paracetamols, that's it, cancer cured. <laughs> but I was just having bare paracetamol and um, just trying to get the fever out. I flew on Friday, traveling. Traveling is not recommended while you're, while you're feeling ill as well. Friday, that Friday, that Friday night, I was having cold sweats, just burning up, man. But the paracetamol was keeping it at bay. That Saturday, we're training in a, um, a gym out there and we're doing just a little bit of last bit of final touches, right? So I'm doing this little final touches and um, after like one minute, I knew, I told my coach, look, I feel like shit. I feel like trash. Like, I, don't, I don't know what I can do because right now, I feel like as, as soon as you start working out, my body, the energy just went, just depleted completely. And then the fight night came. I was feeling a little bit better. I had cold sweat, sweats that night as well. And in the morning, I was just thinking to myself, okay, it is what it is. It doesn't matter if I'm ill, you know, I'm still going to fight. You know, I'm, pre I'm, pre I'm prepared eight weeks for this date. You know, that's all I had in my mind. So all I have to do is just go out there and win. In the back, we're warming up in the back now. We're warming up in the back. And um, as soon as I started warming up, I felt my energy just go to like zero. And I was just like telling my coach, look, I'm not, I don't want to warm up anymore. Because if, I, cause if I'm feeling bad in the warm up, I don't want to do a bad warm up. And then, not that warm ups make a difference, but if I'm doing poor in my warm up, it's going to affect my confidence. So <laughs> I was just burning up. And then I go out there. And as soon as I touched the cage, I'm there, I felt okay. I, saw, I see my opponent in front of me. I know, okay, just a, just another day in the office. I'm gonna fight, and and keeping active is a big part of that. So I know there's no nerves or no uh, crazy feelings, but as soon as I go out I'm, I'm, and I go to touch gloves, I'm telling my body to do something. I'm telling my body, you know, jab, jab, or do something. My body's not listening to me. I've never felt like that. But then I was just going off instinct. How it was a bit of a scrap. How it was the hell a scrap. did you pull that through? Man? That's crazy. It, it, it is what it is. It, I just knew that. As, I have, when I, as soon as I take it to the ground, I'm finishing yeah. the fight. What, was, it, was your mindset like, I got to finish this in the first round? I got to finish this in the first round. Otherwise, literally, otherwise it was no. literally, I, I have to finish. There was a high chance of you. I, I wouldn't have made it to the second round. Second round, yeah, yeah. I yeah. wouldn't have made it to the second round. I would have that's been crazy, too, yeah. I would have been too depleted. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the thing as well, though. Like a lot of uh, people that watch the sport and stuff, they don't know like fighters go through a lot of injuries. They, they don't, don't see <laughs> hard weight cuts. They don't yeah. see. And then when the guy loses, oh, he's, he's over, his career's over. He's, 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 I, I feel like there's a lot of people that, it's easy to criticize when I'm sitting here on the mic, but they actually do it and then compete and with all that stuff going on and then you somehow still won. That's, that's amazing. Like, but you see what I mean? Like, look now, if you had lost now, that's the thing. People, people said, oh, he's all hype. No, no, people single. won't accept that as an excuse. They won't accept that as an excuse. People yeah, will yeah. see, okay, okay, that's a, that's a convenient excuse, you were ill. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I knew that in my head, you know, no one's going to believe that excuse. So I had to win. I had to win, like, in the first round. And I had to. Like, I don't know if you saw, like, Mokaev, he goes that like, he was vomiting and that like, before his fight. Yeah, his fight, yeah his... people don't know, man. It gets real, like, yeah, people, yeah. There's, there's a fine line between pulling out and, you know, fighting. And, you know, sometimes you have to take that risk. And I know people have come out there to watch me and I'm not going to go out there and pull out last second. How ironic would that be? I have two, two pull outs and then I become the one to pull yeah, out at the last minute. Out, yeah. So I'm not going to do, do that. Do you feel like as your pro, pro, uh, career progresses, you're going to get bigger, right? There's more on the line. Do you feel like you won't take a replacement fight like that? Um, do, you, do you get what I mean? Like because I, I would, Late notice replacements, they never are. I don't think... So okay I don't think I'd do that. Up, but. It would have been easier. I'll be honest. This fight would have been easier if I was healthier. I would have made it like within. I would have finished him quicker. Yeah, yeah. Like I had no doubts about that. I'd finish my opponent, but it's just how I was feeling and how my body was that caused all the doubts. But you know, alhamdulillah, it's a big, it's a big learning curve. I need this. I need these experiences because you're not always going to go out and fight hundred percent. You're not always yeah. going to fight hundred percent, and you have to know. It's the work you put into training. Sometimes I, I'm training when I'm not feeling it and I've never missed a session. So I have that confidence in my work ethic, you know, knowing that I've not taken any shortcuts, never taken a, 
you know, a session, a session off because I didn't feel like it. Da, 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 da. I'm training, no matter what. So yeah, like um, talking about that, the like progression of um, heavyweights now. So like when I started watching it, Brock Lesnar was big, Frank Mir, and then you progress on like further and further, and now, then you got uh, Ngannou and now John Jones, Tom Aspinall from the UK. Do you feel like heavyweight has always been seen as like the least technical division? But it's starting to get a lot more technical now with the guys like, like Aspinall, the way he yeah, moves and things. Yeah. And the way, even the way you move, bro, like the way you move is like really good as well. Like, do you feel like the heavyweights are progressing now? The competition is getting more tougher in that sense. I think um, there's, there's a new generation of heavyweights. I, I do, definitely do think that. But I definitely think there's only a rare few like, that can be, move like Aspinall or, you know, for the most part, heavyweight is the least technical. Very. Uh, yeah, it's not very technical, but there's a reason for that. Because, because of the power. People, big boys, they can bang. Boy, yeah, you can bang. Yeah. You know, people, they, they haven't really felt it and like, seen what it's like, but you know, one shot makes the difference. And, um, with these lighter guys, they can, they can co like, cover fire, da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. they can do all of these, this fancy stuff. But with the big boys, it just takes one punch. Like, look at him going. <laughs> yeah, even people, people don't realize, even if you get hit on the, on the arms yeah. from a heavyweight, it, it, can, it can, it can, it can like, sh it can. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, a it lot hurts. of power going through that. But I think definitely, there's, a, there's, there's, they are gonna get more technical as time goes on because I don't. Do you know what? I don't know with heavyweights. I actually don't know because a lot of them, they don't want to grapple. For example, yeah. Cyril got two title shots and he has zero grappling. Yeah, like, yeah. almost zero. Like. Like Ngannou look like an ADCC champion. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? They done, they done the, what a scissor sweep on him or something. <laughs> yeah. Like, and if all, if he just stayed on top in that moment, if you knew how to control him, he would have been a world champion. Yeah. Literally, like he would have won that round, and then he would have been. So it's crazy. Um, but that's the thing we do at Fight Zone. You know, we grapple a lot. We yeah, grapple yeah. a lot. Like you said, you started off in BJJ. Yeah, like we that, grapple so. a lot. Even our MMA sessions, we grapple a lot. Like, people don't think. No, we, they see the, our striking yeah, our striking is yeah, good yeah, yeah. I get in a lot of knock, knockouts but people don't realise you know what, what, are you doing uh, no gear only or are you doing gear as well nah I, I, stopped, I used to do gear, a lot of gear before but I stopped what did you get up to with the gear did you get your blue or purple or yeah I've got my blue belt but I'm oh, okay. not doing gear so I won't get graded anymore what would you say at level you're at no gear then in your opinion are you like a purple belt level yeah mm -hmm. purple belt probably but I'm not really too fast because okay, yeah. jiu jitsu sport jiu jitsu and MMA yeah, is very I, different uh, let's speak about that actually you know sports jiu jitsu now yeah. Yeah. my problem with it is I feel like a lot of the guys they can't do takedowns no they can't they just bot scoop and then they expect you to go. I'm like there's no rest. There's no emphasis on takedowns. There's no emphasis on takedowns. Yeah. Like none of them like do judo. But that's the difference on. between like IBJJF and ADCC kind of thing. Yeah, ADCC yeah. they focus they see, more on takedowns. The wrestlers do a lot better. Yeah, the wrestlers do a lot. The better. guys with the wrestling yeah. background they do a lot. Tend to do a lot better. Yeah. And win comps. Like, is that something you're looking to go into later? Like jiu-jitsu comps and thing. I don't or you mind. Just, you know what? Do like, you know what? It just is? keep active. Yeah, it's mainly an activity thing with me. Um, jiu-jitsu comps. If I'm if I'm not fighting for a while. I'll see what's available and just do it because it's good experience and uh, it's good to deal with competition nerves and things like that. Yeah, just uh, before my pro, uh, before my pro debut, I think I had a, I had a little jits comp that I did before my pro debut. Yeah, and uh, it's good experience. But jiu jitsu is always, it's kind of a lot of stalling. It's not very um, dynamic or. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. not very. It's exciting. not very. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I when I was grappling these guys, I was like. Uh, no, MMA, you're used to a lot more like, higher tempo. Just make sure your jiu-jitsu coach doesn't hear this. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, do you know what? He, he understands it perfectly. Yeah, yeah, like, my yeah, jiu-jitsu yeah. coach, Nico, yeah, yeah, Nico yeah. He, he, he's like, um, he's fully on board with like, all of this MMA that we do. Like, he, 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 he comes to us and he teaches us, okay, this is what you're going to do in MMA setting. Like, he doesn't teach us, when it comes to us, the MMA fighters, me, Mario, Stu, he teaches us, okay, we're just focusing on control and from here you can strike, da 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 But I always felt like, you know, jiu-jitsu guys, they should do like one day a week where they just get MMA gloves and punch and do like some yeah, self-defense yeah. like once a I week. I think that's the original jiu-jitsu I had it in mind. When yeah, I left, my uncle learned under Gracie jiu-jitsu, mm. like they teach you how to get out of headlock, yeah. how to get out of a thing, like, you know what I mean? Like the basic position, armbar, rear naked, mount, mm. how to use your guard, getting up. 
like jiu-jitsu it was supposed to be like that and yeah. then it's become a bit watered down in that sense i feel like yeah so uh talking about your game now like you said jiu-jitsu now how about wrestling because a lot of people in the uk wrestling's coming up now but there's still a lot of work to do in it yeah do you, how's your wrestling going in that no my, wrest- my wrestling like like i said we do a lot of grappling and wrestling so people don't um i mean they're gonna find out i mean but they did actually you know what i should say we do zero grappling zero wrestling you know <laughs> you made them think you're striking. take me down <laughs> <laughs> what do you see it comes with the vulgar platter the over platter <laughs> no but yeah i think li- listen we, we don't we don't neglect anything here you know we, we we cover all the bases so we're comfortable anywhere so you know fight zone now your team right how would you describe your gym to people like how would you promote you wearing the t-shirt there for <laughs> how would i promote you then like uh we're based in uh, bethnal green in london east london right. and um how would i describe it you know what it's 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 a, it's a great gym, you know. You, you see the people here, they want to learn, they want to train, they want to have fun. There's no, there's no egos here. Um, we're all here just to help each other. And, you know, it, it's very beginner-friendly as well. I think at all levels, it's very accommodating. And you can see what we're, what we're accomplishing, what we're achieving out of this gym. You know, it's, uh, it's getting noticed, you know. So, like, for example, my, my, my coach, Stuart, He's fighting for Octagon World Title in uh, May. Oh, crazy! Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and my, my my teammate Mario Pinto, he just defended his uh, LFO Heavyweight World Title. So you can see that the levels are coming out, and the amateur, the amateurs here in terms of MMA training, you know, we're we're progressing, we're progressing, you know. Yeah. So talking about your teammate uh, Mario Pinto, so he's done well. How's it training with him, like within that? It, it's great. Uh, we've been training together for a while now. Um, and um, it's, it's, it's very good having heavyweight teammates as in yeah, I was just going to say there's not a lot there's like, not a lot I mean, and the only really big team that has heavyweights is Aspinall Gym yeah, yeah they yeah, have a yeah. lot of they heavyweights a lot of, lot of big right? boys a lot of big boys there so that's very important when it comes to training having good heavyweight training partners and I think people they don't realise like how good Mario is the guy fought three people on one night. Do you know what I mean? He's not a slouch. Yeah, yeah, that's not. That's, that's not. That's, serious, that's not yeah. That's not that's easy. That's not easy feat. People only do that in like kickboxing. You sure. never, you never hear that. That's old school MMA. That's old school MMA. That's yeah, the, the yeah. 90s when they had the, the pride tournament yeah, one night tournaments, tournaments and the, and the, 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 the ring yeah. one night tournaments. You know what I mean? So when you're training with a guy like that, who's dedicated, motivated, and um, just it's mental. It's the mental side as well to to, to fighting, yeah, yeah. and. Um, you know, it, it makes your life easy. It makes training easy when you're training with someone dedicated. It doesn't get involved in distractions and these sorts of things. So it's, it's a privilege, you know. It's a, he's going to do big things. He's eight and zero as a heavyweight, you know. Yeah, that's crazy. That's man. crazy. So that, that, it, it's, it's only a matter of time. is knocking on the door, bro. They're knocking on the door. In you my know opinion, what I mean? you're a heavyweight. You're eight and zero, and you're young as well. Like. It's a no-brainer, isn't it? No-brainer. Yeah. They, they might do contender series, but I think they'll sign him directly. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they want heavy, it's like, that's yeah. my opinion anyway. Yeah, um, I think so too. So, uh, I know we've got to cut you short, so I'm going to ask you a few quick fire round questions. Uh, so, are you a texter or a caller? Texter. Texter, oh yeah. Um, what's one place you like to visit in the world, like, if you had the opportunity to go? Thailand, because I've never been. Thailand? Yeah. All right, all right. What, for, for, for training? Yeah, yeah for training, for training. For training. <laughs> <laughs> um, who's one person that inspires you? One person that inspires me? I mean, uh, anything not fighting. I, I can't say one person. I would say my parents, just because oh, okay. they they work hard and, you know, that's, this is who I do it for as well. My parents, my family, okay. you know. Meat curry or chicken curry? It's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. You can't tricky. be. You can't. No, you obvious. can't. You can't beat a good meat curry. You can't be a good the lamb chop curry. Bro. You can't beat a good meat curry. Yeah. 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 And from full up as well. Bro. Come on. Bro. You Come can't on. beat that, bro. Uh, so, are you like a? Do you like uh, English dessert or do you like mishti? I gotta go with mishti, man. Yeah. I gotta go with mishti, man. Like Rush or gulab jamun. He's doing it on camera. Doing it for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so. Um, which fighter is the one fighter that you kind of that inspired you to get into the sport 
a fighter that inspired me to get into the sport, Fedor. I say Fedor. Oh, Fedor, see, a lot of people don't know that name, yeah. Fedor. Fedor, yeah. Fedor, Fedor, Fedor like, was the first guy, the MMA guy. He's the, the first guy. MMA guy I watched. Okay. Like, first introduction to MMA was Fedor in, like, secondary school. So I watched him and I was like, how is this, like, tubby guy just knocking these guys out, these massive, huge monsters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. like, he was just, like... He's quite big, though, you know, like, in person. Like, I saw him in person, he's really wide, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's just, his speed and, like, just crazy. Just What's living. your favorite striking technique? Favorite striking technique? Like what combo do you like? Spinning crescent kick. <laughs> He's lying. But yeah. No, I'm not even lying. <laughs> you can do a spinning crescent kick. You'd be surprised. Yeah. You'd be surprised. What about uh, submission? What's your favorite submission? Favorite submission. Oh, you've got no grappling. So you can't <laughs> ask me that I've one. got no grappling, so you can't ask me that. What's favorite that? submission... Uh, I'll say rear naked choke. Just it's the it's the it's when you rear get lock choke. it in, it's done. Uh, when can we see? You, when are we gonna see you next? Do you feel like in the this Friday, Bangladesh, Dhaka? I'm fighting boxing uh, versus a Polish guy, Marcin Bain Lazar. It's gonna be good tuning. Oh, is it? This, <laughs> yeah. is, this is not gonna come out by then. <laughs> so, oh yeah, but, yeah, but you but, know, anyways. Yeah, you know, anyways. <laughs> so I'll give I'll give you the the results now. <laughs> I'm gonna knock him out of it. But, yeah, no, yeah. but he's a good guy. He's a good he's opponent. He's a good, good Polish opponent. guy. Yeah, yeah. You doing boxing? Yeah, he's boxing. Yeah. Oh, you trying it's to be a, the next thing on? No. <laughs> you never know. Listen, show me the money. <laughs> show me the money. Um, all right, uh, we're gonna have to uh, end it. But before we end it, you got any message for all the people watching and? Listen, thank you for all the support. I um, appreciate it a lot. Um, this guy was my first ever guy to interview me and look where we are now. And uh, inshallah, you know, we've got a lot, lot more to go. And um, yeah, I just want to say that I appreciate all the support and uh, thank you for everything. Next interview needs to be longer. We cut this one, we have <laughs> yeah. to cut this one short. We have to cut but, this one short, um, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, where can people find you on uh, social media? Uh, people can find me on uh, Instagram, Shark01 and on YouTube, Shark Kamali. MMA on Twitter Shah Kamali MMA on Facebook Shah Kamali <laughs> so yeah so guys you heard it Shah Kamali yes support him show him love um, you know get behind him uh, one of the own and follow MMA Diagnosis on all social media platforms give us support the more you support us the more we can do interviews like this more podcasts like this and uh you're going to see us. Hopefully, Shah will be taking over the MMA game. I'm going to take over this game. And then <laughs> we'll see you guys later. This is MMA Diagnosis Podcast. Shah Kamali, we're out. Press that.